In today's video, we will be discussing how to write science fiction, comics, manga, and webtoons. Science fiction, or sci-fi for short, is a genre of speculative fiction which usually revolves around imaginative and futuristic concepts such as advanced science and technology, space exploration, time travel, parallel universes, and extraterrestrial life. You may have heard of popular sci-fi anime such as Steins Gate, Cowboy Bebop, and Neon Genesis Evangelion. Popular sci-fi manga include Dr. Stone, Parasite the Maxim, and Akira. Throughout its history, science fiction has become deeply ingrained in pop culture, with films like Star Wars, The Matrix, and Dune taking the world by storm. If you are interested in learning more about this imaginative genre, then you are in the right place. By the end of this video, you will learn everything you need to know about the sci-fi genre, the connection between sci-fi and fantasy, and how to write your own sci-fi story. But before that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Gadget Discovery Club. Gadget Discovery Club is a quarterly subscription box that delivers epic excitement and upgrades to your everyday lifestyle. You may have seen Gadget Discovery Club featured in Tech Radar, Wired, and GQ. With Gadget Discovery Club, you will discover gadgets that you didn't know you needed. In this month's box, I received awesome gadgets like a wireless charger, a wireless speaker, and an ultra-slim phone grip. To be completely honest, I needed a lot of these items, so this was a pleasant surprise. I couldn't have asked for better gadgets to receive this month. Every year, cutting-edge brands design new gadgets and wearable devices. The average person is most likely missing out on the opportunity to try this new tech. But now you don't need to. Sign up for Gadget Discovery Club today and get yourself a themed tech box. Check out the link in my description box and pinned comment to learn more about Gadget Discovery Club. If you use my unique affiliate link, you will be supporting the channel. Thank you again, Gadget Discovery Club, for making today's video possible. Now let's get back to the video. Today I am joined by Ricardo Antonio, an independent comic artist and novelist. I am Ricardo Antonio. I am an artist, an author, a storyteller. When it comes to the illustration and graphic design, I do freelance work and usually it's project by project basis. I do a lot of artwork for a company called Spiral Dreams, which is a Southern California DJ collective. And for their shows, I usually am the one who is designing the branding and the marketing for the events. I also create the branding assets for Sutley Foxtail, who is a streamer. When it comes to comics, I do have a cyberpunk comic coming out with Koguchi Press. That should be out in October. In the second issue, there will be science fantasy in the first issue and straight up cyberpunk in the second issue. I have a science fantasy novella that dropped on July 15th, and that's available everywhere right now on Amazon in paperback. The ebook will be available on Kindle devices and the Kindle app on September 19th, which is Talk Like a Pirate Day because the story has sky pirates. You can find me on Instagram at Ricardo Antonio Art. And it's the same thing on threads. On Twitter, it's Rantonio Art. Through there, you'll find the links to all the things that I do. Links to all of that will be listed in the description box and comment section below. If you are a fan of immersive sci-fi stories, I really hope you can check out Ricardo's novella, Corsair of Calamity. Science fiction, often abbreviated as SF or sci-fi, usually deals with the impact or imagined science upon societies or individuals. The genre formally emerged in the West with the Industrial Revolution inspiring writers and intellectuals to envision the future impact of technology. This led to the creation of a subgenre known as steampunk. By the beginning of the 20th century, an array of science fiction sets had developed around certain themes including space travel, robots, aliens, and time travel. And usually it's in a lot of detail. It's a harder concept rather than softer. It's exploring the mystery of science. It could play around with sciences that exist in the real world and just amplify it, make it more absurd or more of a mystery as well. It is not always just space stuff, but a lot of it is. It's definitely nuanced because there are so many different science fiction genres and subgenres. Historic events like World War II led to the creation of the kaiju subgenre. Giant monsters like Godzilla served as a metaphor for nuclear warfare, reflecting the fears of post-war Japan following the atomic bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Common theatrics in science fiction writing include prophetic warnings, utopian societies, imaginary worlds, titanic disasters, strange voyages, and the fear of technological advancement. Science fiction is an umbrella term used to encapsulate a wide variety of subgenres and tropes. The genre is constantly expanding and there is a science fiction subgenre for just about every story you can imagine. Here is a quick look into the many different subgenres of science fiction. Hard science fiction. 
Stories where science and technology are the main focus. These stories will be heavy in concept. Soft science fiction, the opposite of hard science fiction in almost every way. Characters take center stage. These stories are less inclined to explain how things in the world function. These stories are more inclined to explain why and the effects it has on the characters and their choices. Military science fiction, stories that follow characters who are related to the military. These stories may promote themes of glory, responsibility, and heroism. Other stories may reflect or critique issues regarding the military and war. Cyberpunk, set in a dystopian setting that focuses on a combination of low life and high technology, features futuristic technological and scientific achievements such as artificial intelligence and cybernetics juxtaposed to societal collapse, dystopia, or decay. Space Western, these stories portray societies in space that are much like the American Old West, lawless and gritty. Characters may be scoundrels, bounty hunters, or smugglers. Steampunk, set in an alternate 19th century where steam power has allowed for a technological boom. Characters often wear goggles, leather, and fly steam-powered airships. Dystopian. These stories explore what happens during and or after the world ends. Some stories take place during the implosion and right after, while other stories are set far into the future, seeing what happens to humanity after the apocalypse. Sci-fi horror. These stories explore the horror of science. Space as a setting is naturally frightening. Everything about it is deadly to human life. These stories may focus on aliens, human experimentation, or the ethics of technology. Sci-fi comedy. These stories are lighthearted with colorful characters, suspense, and adventure. Space opera. The science fiction equivalent of an epic fantasy. These stories are mostly set in space and feature many locations, story arcs, and characters. Believe it or not, one of the first ever space operas was an ancient Greek one. It's one where if you were to read it today, it doesn't read like science fiction because they were going off of the modern sciences of that day. And it was what they knew. They would have like boats sailing on winds in outer space, even though we know there is no wind in outer space and stuff like that. Same thing with today. More and more modern science fiction takes what we know and amplifies it or just exaggerates a lot of aspects of it. For example, like the Black Mirror TV show that does a lot of that. Compared to other genres like fantasy, science fiction tends to be grounded in reality. While many aspects of sci-fi can be imaginative, hypothetical, or made up, some scenarios may feel probable. Science fiction can be more explanation-based or conceptually harder than other genres. It is common for sci-fi stories to explore how technological advancements work and what effect they have on society. Of course, not everyone is a doctor or an engineer or a biologist. If you don't have a specific background in science, is it impossible to write science fiction? If you're tackling a specific subgenre of science fiction, then I'd say it's important to at least read or consume whatever media that falls under that same genre. And on top of that, if it is something specific, and if you are going to go harder with some descriptions and how the world works, then just try to research the topics that it tackles. For example, in my story that is coming out in Koguchi, it's a cyberpunk story. I had to research a lot of things in regards to what a cyberpunk story entails, like what the setting would be like, how the world should be structured. But even further than that, because of the specific story, and the plot, I had to do a little more research that I didn't think I would ever research just so that a lot of the things that happen that are totally ridiculous and are just unrealistic could still feel realistic. But then at the same time, you can also not go super realistic with things. With a time traveling story, people say there are rules of time travel, but not really. You don't have to follow any time travel rules. Because time travel, at the time of recording, there is no time travel. There are theories, but it can work however you want it to work. Look at comic books like The Flash. Like, they just do whatever the heck they want. Sometimes they do the thing where you can't interact with your past self. Sometimes they don't. There is the golden advice of write what you know, but at the same time, when it comes to this genre, you might not know how biology works, but if you do want to tackle that subject, then research it. Because if you don't do it right, then it just won't make sense. One complaint that I often hear from aspiring comic artists who want to write sci-fi stories is, what if my scientific explanations don't make any sense? When you think about it, there are scientists out there who know almost everything there is to know about biology, chemistry, neurology, botany, psychology, and robotics. So I can understand that fear of potentially getting something wrong or creating a plot hole that doesn't make much sense in reality. Would you say that is a common fear among sci-fi writers? It's definitely a fear. 
that's one of the biggest reasons why specifically for the cyberpunk story it was kind of stressful because i'm tackling the topic of how a brain does a thing so if i didn't get the right part of the brain correctly then you know it all falls apart because the foundation isn't there sometimes you can make up things i know one that is used so frequently in science fiction is the idea of tachyons tachyons are not a real thing but there's some sort of element that can theoretically exist personally science fiction is one of my favorite genres specifically for anime and manga some of my favorite series include Steins Gate, Vivi Floret Ice Song, Serial Experiments Lane, 86, Trigun, and Neon Genesis Evangelion. In my opinion, compared to other genres, science fiction has the best story concepts and world building. In recent years, I have become very fatigued to the isekai fantasy boom in anime, manga, and light novels. For me, personally, it definitely has to do with both character centric stories but also immersive worlds take it back to star wars you have a rich world and it's a huge galaxy but look at the movies we're narrowing in we're focusing on a single family the skywalkers we're focusing on luke we're focusing on anakin in this vast galaxy you know you have so many diverse cultures and then you have like technology it doesn't exist but then you have these characters just going back to the original trilogy alone you know it's just luke han and leia let's explore these characters when it's balanced well like that that's where i fall in love with it same thing with like the guardians of the galaxy you have so many wacky planets and alien species and whatnot but we're focusing on these idiots that they're banded together you know you could tell broader stories too with world building but for me i think my preference is definitely focusing on characters blade runner is so unique in that it's a future of the real world that is very believable there is the original movie and then there is the sequel that came out with ryan gosling this is what heavily inspires my cyberpunk story because the way the world is like technology when you think of sci-fi a lot of people assume fancy computers and big holograms and all the neon colors and what's interesting is that with Blade Runner you have the neon colors because of like signs and whatnot and advertisement but that's the thing cyberpunk specifically has to deal with corporations taking over the world essentially but what makes it even scarier is how much it invades your personal life like you even see in cyberpunk edge runners that's the other thing too it's the pioneer of cyberpunk it's a noir story that's the thing it's about a detective solving a mystery it's it's brilliant because how can you get into the most nitty-gritty part of a city i mean have detectives solving cases where they need to go into the streets need to see how the everyday person lives when it comes to like just aesthetics it's so good because it isn't with the fancy technology it isn't with time travel or light speed well you have a flying car but it's only the people who are the elites of this world that have that everybody else is just walking around or even on bicycles and then you have technology that is more analog than anything else one of the most popular scenes is harrison ford's character like investigating and looking at these photos for clues and he uses this machine that is this very clunky totally 80s machine that is essentially doing what we do in Photoshop by zooming in and whatnot, but it's doing it like an analog machine would. It's voice recognized, like he's like, go to the left, and, and you hear the machine just buzzing, and he prints a hard copy of a photograph. It's almost like it's aged backwards, but it's still technology that is in the future, like we don't have that. I just love the aesthetic of it because it's not squeaky clean and shiny and this ridiculous technology that would never exist. Conceptually, you might think science fiction is the opposite of the fantasy genre. In reality, they are two sides of the same coin. Science fantasy is a subgenre of both sci-fi and fantasy that features worlds that are both scientific and magical. In these stories, paranormal activities are so pronounced that they resemble magic in the fantastical sense. What this means is the power system could be so advanced and incomprehensible that it appears to be magic. So you could have that, the technology, but you also have part of this that is magical that is unexplained. It's a softer system of science. The big title that comes to mind is an adaptation of Robert Louis Stevenson's classic Treasure Island, and that's Disney's Treasure Planet. Treasure Planet is awesome. The idea with Treasure Planet, think of that time when we had pirates and sailors, the 1700s, 
some of these sailors came over to the Caribbean. They're sailing the seas. That's the only way to get around. And so, take that. The boats fly, and they even go into space to different planets. And here's the kicker. Open to space. They have artificial gravity and whatnot, but somehow their sails are sailing in space where there's no wind. Do we question the realism in that technology? Hell no. Who cares? It just looks cool. And that's okay. You could do that too with your science fiction story. In Star Wars, you got the technology, but it's not just the pew pews and the bzz, lightsabers. It's not just that. You have the force. You have this soft magic system. Sometimes hard, depends how it's written, but the force is just this force that manipulates things. What is the historic term for things that are unexplained? Magic. Science fiction and fantasy are essentially the same thing. You have very similar stories. The difference here is the technology and also how much of technology there is and how advanced technology may be. Brandon Sanderson's Cosmere which includes a bunch of different trilogies, a bunch of different books. The way that he explains his magic is very much like a science. He goes hard with how the magic works, but he also has science fiction in this grand Cosmere universe. If you think of like even how the MCU handled Thor story, like with Thor and Asgard, in the MCU's adaptation of it, it's magic and science working in tandem. Like, they're, they're the same thing. Even how it, like, bridges over to other things later on with, like, the Guardians of the Galaxy. Asgardians are just another race in outer space, you know? What is magic to them and has always been magic to them is also just, like, technology that anyone else in the universe would have. Dune is a huge influence on the genre of science fiction. But there's some mysticism and like religious like magic stuff in that story. This can be seen in the anime series, A Certain Magical Index, where the power system is seen as both scientific and magical. Growing up, I would always hear Star Wars is a boys movie. So for the longest time, I assumed that science fiction was looked at as a male dominated genre. According to a blind survey conducted by Mark Neiman Ross, a science fiction writer, out of 581 people, 21% of the population answered, yes, I read science fiction. Out of the respondents who read science fiction, 57% identified as male. While slightly male dominated, this is almost a 50-50 split. It's actually pretty mixed because like with Star Wars, everybody's into it because you have characters and storylines that are tailored to anyone and their tastes. One Star Wars book or comic or show or game is not the same as another Star Wars. I mean, just look at like even back when it first came out, like you have a character like Leia who is a very strong female character that has her own personhood that isn't overshadowed. Building on this, modern science fiction anime like 86, Vivi Floyd Eye Song, and The Promised Neverland feature active female protagonists. All of these main characters are very well written with compelling backstories, goals, and aspirations. They are also not afraid to take action and make their presence known. Compared to the average shonen battle fantasy manga, the portrayal of these female protagonists was a lot better. Going even further, dystopian young adult fiction exploded in the past decade, with series like The Hunger Games, Divergent, and The Maze Runner taking the world by storm. What's interesting is, the main demographic for these young adult science fiction novels were teenage girls. And the thing is too, it's not always the same thing either. Like, dystopian could be anything, but usually, back then it was the popular young adult sci-fi subgenre that would make all the dystopians battle royales. But that's not what they all are. Mad Max is in a dystopian future. But yeah, YA is still huge, still sells like hotcakes. Mostly, it's just about how it's written. It's easier to comprehend, it's easier to read. To connect it to like manga, it's like the shonen borderlining seinen, where it's like the audience is the older teens. So like you get to do stuff where it's like, ooh, it's kind of risque, but not too much because then it becomes just adult. As someone who has written science fiction comics and novels, what is your best advice to aspiring creators who want to tackle the sci-fi genre? Read, watch, listen to sci-fi. Because if you're trying to tackle a genre, and if you haven't done that genre, you can't go into it blind. You won't know what you're writing. Finally, could you recommend a few science fiction stories for us to check out to really understand what the sci-fi genre is all about? Dune is a good one to at least get the concept of sci-fi. You might or might not be entertained by it. It's a very slow movie. Cowboy Bebop, watch that. Blade Runner, watch that. You'll see how Blade Runner influenced Cowboy Bebop. And even Akira, The Matrix, which pointed to Ghost in the Shell. Ghost in the Shell was inspired by 
Blade Runner, the video game series, Mass Effect, awesome series. Like, even if you don't get the game, try to look up scenes on YouTube or something. That is one of the best stories ever told. It's somewhat like Star Trek because it has similar structure to the world. Cyberpunk, I know a lot of people fell in love with Edge Runners, and rightfully so. It's a really good show. It's so cool to me because it's much like Blade Runner. It's a very realistic, like, this is probably what the future is going to be like for us. So C.S. Lewis, who's known for Narnia, he wrote a sci-fi trilogy. The first one is Out of the Silent Planet. It's, it's old, pretty dang good. The Expanse is a series of books. The Expanse is big sci-fi, militaristic. There's one from the author of Aragon. It's a huge book, but it's called To Sleep in the Sea of Stars. He's also someone who went super hard with his sci-fi to the point where in the back of the book, you have actual research papers because he actually went to people who know what they're talking about. Doctors in the field of science. They literally wrote papers on the concepts that he made up for his story. So that way they make sense in real world science. It's insane. Superman American Alien does a good job with Superman's story. Really the origin of Clark Kent. The new show, My Adventures with Superman, takes a lot of inspiration from how they did Clark's story in this. But it's a good story. You might or might not like how the dialogue's written because it's very much in the voice of that writer. But again, you don't have to because the writer is a terrible person. So if you really can't separate the two, then that's fine. If you have the time, please look into the series that Ricardo mentioned. They will be a great resource for learning more about the science fiction genre. They will also be a good source of inspiration to help you develop your own sci-fi story. I hope you were able to get some value out of this video. You can find me on Instagram at Ricardo Antonio Art. On Twitter, it's Rantonio Art. And currently on Amazon, you can get yourself a copy of Corsair of Calamity, my science fantasy novella. And in October, issue two of Koguchi, my story, Daybreak Dreamers, will be in that issue. Hopefully you'll enjoy that. Also enjoy my book, Corsair of Calamity. You got pirates in the sky and other fun things. If you do read it, leave a review. <laughs> leave a review on Amazon and Goodreads. I want to take this moment to once again thank Ricardo Antonio for taking the time to join us in today's video. Remember, if you are interested in checking out Ricardo's science fiction novella, Corsair of Calamity, I will leave links to it in the description box and comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and hit the notification bell that way you'll be notified whenever there's a new video on this channel boom what that's right boom bam bop i did that <laughs>